Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and a long time ago, I was a Windows user. Died in the wool! I used a Pocket PC. Loved the Pocket PC. Back in the day, it was the best Pocket PC that was available. That's what it was called way back when. And then I think they rebranded it. Eventually, it became known as Windows Mobile. Uh, I've not really thought about it much over the past decade or so. But it was all I used at one point because it was useful. In fact, I was such a advocate for Pocket PC that I stuck with it even when there were alternatives that may have been far more affordable. I even tried a new Palm device. There's a brand that should take you back, possibly. And... I found myself in using that Palm device, that Palm experience, to be installing applications that would make it work more like my Pocket PC, like a Windows mobile device, whatever the hell Microsoft was calling it at the time. And that's when I learned, well, you know, instead of modding this experience to work like that experience, I should probably be using that experience. So ultimately, I flip-flopped back and forth between the two platforms and settled on the Windows Mobile strategy, whatever Microsoft's strategy was at the time. I think it was, uh, 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 what was it called? A uh, uh, Blackjack? Is that right? I don't know. Uh, so many devices are completely forgettable. But it had a physical keyboard uh, and a screen that was nice, and I could connect to it from just about anywhere and, and check email, uh, browse the web, kind of. That was a painful experience. A very painful experience. I wish I could explain to you just how painful it was. Like, it was better to browse the web in links than it was to use a, 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 a mobile web browser uh, way back when, about a decade ago. Not that long ago, I guess. Uh, but uh, if you don't remember links, that should be something you research. L-Y-N-X. Check it out. It was the best way to browse the web. It was pretty much the only way to browse the web back in the early 90s. Old school. The... The prospect of, uh, you know, using anything apart from that Windows Mobile experience was very uh, challenging to face. I, I don't know if I could have accepted it. In fact, I didn't because that was the best experience I could possibly find for myself. And I, have, I, I had at that point tried various alternatives. And that's when the iPhone was launched. That left everybody in the dust. That's why I believe the first iPhone was the absolute best iPhone ever. Will always be the best iPhone ever. The first one. I didn't think that I was going to want the new iPhone because the software experience I had grown accustomed to was fine and, 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 and it worked well and it had this feature, that feature, spec, 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 right? And specs are everything, right? I was being sarcastic. Specs aren't everything. I thought that back then, but then I grew up. So when the iPhone came around and I browsed the web in Safari on this touchscreen device that was very responsive, uh, suddenly I realized specs don't really mean a whole lot. Mm, not so much. I was fine. Uh, and, and that was pretty much the last time I, I touched a, a Windows mobile device. Years later, I had a chance to play with a, a Nokia device that had the newer style of Windows operating system on the mobile experience with the, the flippy tiles thing, which was kind of neat. I, I got to tell you, I, I think that's kind of cool. I mean, eventually I kind of want to turn all that stuff off because I don't want things just randomly flipping. I, I'm not playing a game show when I, when I pick up my phone or look at my screen. I know what I want to see. So uh, I just found that the, the, the experience was relatively compelling. The UX was fine. The UI was fine. It was relatively fluid. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was just that, and this is just a few years ago, uh, even though I was a bit put off by this very fluorescent colored device, I think it was like bright blue. You got to remember, I, I am a like black device user like through and through. Uh, but, you know, I was able to kind of look past that because it was the only Windows, newer Windows mobile experience or whatever the hell Microsoft was calling it at the time uh, that, that I had. It's that there were really no other apps for me to 
downloader. There was nothing unique I could do on that device that I couldn't already do on an alternative platform. Uh, Android, of course, was you know well on its way to establishing dominance in the marketplace. iOS was firmly established as, as pretty much one of the, the higher quality experiences uh, that I had ever uh, had at that point. This is most likely before iOS 7, though. Keep that in mind. But even when we all suffered through 7, 8, 9, 10, we're talking iOS, um, you know, Windows Mobile was still trying to find its way. Microsoft was still trying to figure out its strategy. I argued years ago that what Microsoft needed to do is basically uh, hand someone, a purchaser of a Surface PC, a Windows phone. Here you go. Here's a Windows phone. There you, there you go. There you, there you, it's, it's easy. There you go. This is, by the way, this is not a Windows phone. This is my current uh, Android uh, device. The, the one, my go-to Android experience right here. The, uh, uh, so don't be confused. I'm not saying you can run Windows Mobile on an Android device, nor am I saying that it, it, it's, it's time to check the weather. Sorry. Notifications sometimes distract me. Uh, I, I was already set. I, I was good to go. I, I couldn't download anything new that I couldn't get elsewhere. Windows Mobile wasn't necessarily growing. Uh, Microsoft didn't seem to be doing much to encourage the growth of Windows Mobile. Uh, they took their own approach. I understand Microsoft's not a hardware company, but to me, it was really about not just finding the developers to engage, but specifically the user base. And Microsoft had the user base, man. They already had velocity around the Surface. The, hardware's, the hardware these days... I'm sure it's worth nothing. I think I sold that device for like 50 bucks, if that, like maybe 25. I don't even know if I could have given it away. I don't even know if I could still give it away. The hardware is worthless. Absolutely worthless in the grand scheme of things. Had Microsoft handed over a device, uh, a, and I'm just using this again as a prop, don't freak out, okay, all you people who are going to be critical over everything that I do or don't do, uh, they would have literally handed over a device with every Surface PC purchase there'd be a lot more Windows phones out there. And it would be placed in the hands of, of people who may not have even thought of Windows Mobile outright because it wasn't available on a carrier plan or it, it just wasn't marketed uh, the way that a, a, you know an iPhone might have been or an Android might have been uh, or a device might have been. The, uh, 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 the strategy, I, I thought, would have been a lot more um, cogent if they just got the devices into people's hands. As many as they could just crank out, because then at least they would be there. And, and I, well, what, what, what's this device? Oh, okay, it does this? Oh, interesting. Oh, that's a really nice camera, because it's a Nokia phone, and Nokia is you know, pretty well known for placing nice cameras in their phones. And well, I guess this does everything I need it to do. It's kind of like having a Microsoft Windows type of experience-esque experience in my pocket. I can do most of everything I need to do. I can chat with people. I can do this. I can do. I got. Oh, I got an Xbox too. Okay. So they should have given a, a, away a Windows uh, or Surface phone. That probably should have gone with the Surface name. Um, as as a, as a bonus when you purchased an Xbox, just give them away. Give the phones away for market proliferation. Uh, just n nothing. What what would that have hurt? Honestly, what would that have hurt? Would have hurt Microsoft's bottom line. They may have lost a few dollars, but they would have spent those uh, dollars on marketing or would have tried to spend those dollars on marketing and would likely be in a completely different position today. So I, I, I just I feel they, they took the wrong approach in, in, in just expecting people would want a, a Windows phone. I mean, let's forget about the mistakes that, that happened when the iPhone was launched in, in relation to how Microsoft did not respond to it. I think we all know how that turned out. But, you know, it's, it's, to me, very, very telling where Microsoft's head's at today. It is somewhat reassuring that they're at least thinking through things in a more reasonable fashion, and I say for the most part. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up this topic today is because it's pretty much DOA. Uh, over uh, the weekend, Microsoft's corporate vice president for Windows, Joe Bel uh, Belfiore, uh, basically tweeted out a, a few a few things, including, as an individual end user, I switched platforms for the app and hardware diversity. He switched to Android, much like Bill Gates did. Uh, we will support those users too. Choose what's best for you. But for the most part, it, Windows is it, the, on on the mobile platform is just it's it's non-existent as far as developers are concerned, as far as users are concerned. This doesn't speak to the general experience of what that provided for users. Uh, but, you know, Joe also you know, he tweeted out, he says, of course, we'll continue to uh, support the platform, bug fixes, security updates, etc. 
but building new features heart and hardware are not the focus. Uh, he continues in another tweet, we have tried very hard to incent app developers, paid money, wrote apps for them, but the volume of users is too low for most companies to invest. That doesn't surprise me at all, um, which goes back to the original point that I was making in relation to how they could have done this better. I know hindsight's always twenty twenty, but I argued this years ago. I don't know if I have a video link, but I know exactly what I was thinking. Like, you've got to get these devices into people's hands. They're not going to see it as a viable alternative if they're if what they are using now is fine and, and what you're throwing at them is okay, but it's maybe a lateral move and it's different. And the only time I ever saw a Windows Phone user, a Windows Phone in general, was specifically in the greater Seattle area, in Redmond. You'd see them all the time. Everywhere else? Nope. <laughs> Not in coffee shops, not anywhere, anywhere in all my years and traveling and looking and watching and observing. Yeah, um, for whatever reason, uh, the cost was prohibitive. The software was, you know, not as compelling as the software experience they had before. A lot of different reasons. So, you know, I, 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 I'm not shocked that they're, they're finally kind of admitting defeat. I mentioned... What could possibly happen, I think in a recent live TLDR episode, uh, if you, uh, uh, I think, have been watching that, that's, of course, in the other uh, YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash LockerGnome, live TLDR every weekday, a Q&A with you and me, so that instead of me diving deeper into one topic I want to talk about, uh, that show is really based upon the things that uh, you want to talk about. Uh, the, uh, 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 the, the concept I, I, I kind of threw out is, is kind of built upon, I guess, what Microsoft's experimenting with right now. Uh, they've effectively got a, a modification of Android on top of, you know, basically have, have slathered Microsoft's software and ex somewhat of an experience on top of Android. In fact, last week, they launched uh, the, uh, the, the, the Microsoft Launcher, whatever it's called, uh, in, or I guess followed up an earlier beta launch, refined it. Uh, it's currently still in beta, but it's effectively Microsoft's take on the Android launcher. I think uh, that is a smart move for Microsoft because Microsoft's not exactly a hardware company so much as they're a software company, as much as they're a services company. But the uh, 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 the concept, I, th I think, that could eventually uh, come to fruition would be a Microsoft Android phone. Microsoft has embraced open source, uh, more so than I think people give them credit for, and I think that's a good thing. I would be interested in seeing Microsoft's spin on an Android uh, uh, platform, what 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 a, a, mo a Windows or a Microsoft mobile experience could be, which is to say, wouldn't it be fascinating to see Microsoft create their own Android phone? Well, they wouldn't call it Android. They wouldn't brand it Android. But much like what a Amazon's done with their Fire series, they forked it, and they're doing their own things with it. It's an Amazon experience, stem to stern, uh, apart from its foundations. Uh, I'd like to see Microsoft do the same thing. A and honestly, I would be shocked if they weren't working on something like that. I mean, it's nice to play with the launcher and have people replace their launcher with another launcher. Okay, and, and maybe have default Office apps pre-installed. But man, I, I, I want to see a, a Microsoft take, like, a full-on Microsoft take of that uh, experience. And that could potentially become uh, very compelling in the marketplace. Microsoft may not control that platform, but if they have a foothold in being able to shoehorn Microsoft services onto a phone and, and, and create compelling Microsoft experiences on a phone, I think it is... <clears throat> It, it, it would be a, an extreme value because Microsoft still, like, is entrenched in enterprise. The end user, yeah, we get... We get Windows on the desktop, sure, but uh, enterprise is where it's all at, and services is where it's all at, and they, the software, 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 software. So just imagine this: so, you know, you buy a phone, and it doesn't say Android on it. You don't know it's Android; it's just a Microsoft phone. They call it a Surface phone or whatever, and you you play with it, and it looks like a complete. It's a completely radical, different experience. You can install, let's say, Android apps on it, so they give you that compatibility, uh, in, in a way. But it's pretty much tied into to Microsoft's stuff and the things that Microsoft needs to be able to provide in a mobile experience. I, I don't think it's that difficult to th to uh, conceive. It's reasonable, uh, and I think a very valid way to at least 
retain some amount of a footprint in a space that's now dominated by both Apple and Google. It's not without precedent. Um, you could effectively turn your current Android device into a Microsoft device, especially with this new launcher uh, and all those integrations within the launcher. And then, of course, all the apps that are available cross-platform. Um, but just imagine something that is just a little more on the nose, uh, just just something that screams Microsoft, allows them to control it stem to stern. I'd like to see that. I, I would like to see them to go that direction, even though Joe suggests that they're still in the mobile space with the HoloLens. I'm like, uh, no. It reminds me of an old 80s movie. I think Christopher Walken was in it. What was it called? Headspace? No, that's the name of a Star Wars album. God, what was it called? But he wore this clunky contraption. And I think that was also in Ghostbusters, too. That's every time I see the HoloLens, I'm just like, nerd! You know, like, but I do the same thing with VR goggles when I see someone wearing them. Nerd! Um, that's my best ogre impression. Obviously, I need to, I need to work on it. I need to practice. Uh, but I, I think that's where Microsoft can go. I know this is what's happening. I know that's what's happened. But you can't, you can't slag Microsoft for... Uh, not creating a compelling experience because I believe they did. Like I said, this is not, um, uh, you know, uh, questioning the merits of what the Windows Mobile platform was, uh, the the quality that that they that was uh, was created in the UI and the UX and the general experience, the hardware and the software. It's it's that the the marketplace had moved on. That's that's kind of the bottom line. That is pretty much what happened. I don't think anybody would would argue with that. But uh, I'd be curious to know what you think about where they could go, where they should go. And in creating a new device, a new platform or whatever, I think that that ship has sailed. I, I really I really do. I've already told you what I believe that Microsoft's best bets are. Now I'm curious to know what you think. Uh, feel free to join us in the Discord chat room. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, I woke up and this, overnight there was just this massive conversation going on Geeks are now hanging out in Discord. You can join it by heading over to my Twitch profile, twitch.tv slash chrisperlo. Become a sub. And once you do, you can even become a sub for free if you've connected your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Uh, and then after you've connected your Discord account to your Twitch account, you can get access to the chat room. It's really super simple to do. Then uh, you could also head over to my Patreon or Patreon account, patreon.com slash Chris Perillo, become a patron. Uh, and then you'll also get instant access to the Discord chat room. It's growing, I will say, by the day. Uh, we're getting just maybe two or three new people a day, which is massive growth. Trust me, you don't want like thousands and thousands of people chatting at the same time. So it's nice to be able to grow steadily. But these are the conversations we're having in there. I love you. I appreciate you. And at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. May the force be with you.